Bucknut, or welcome to the Bucknuts Morning Five here on Wednesday, August twenty second, twenty eighteen, or should I call it D Day for Ohio State and Urban Meyer? I am Dave Biddle. I am joined by the People's Champ Matt Baxendale. At least we hope it's D Day. We might not know the final decision today, but the Board of Trustees um, will begin meeting at nine. It'll be a public session back, and then they'll go into executive session. Uh, that'll be behind closed doors. And you know, I think because Bax, there was an informal session with the board on Monday where they received the committee's findings. I mean, to me, that's huge. If today was the first time the board was really meeting about this, I might feel differently. I might say that Thursday or Friday is when we're really going to hear the decision. But because the board did meet Monday, I do think there's a, you know, more likely than not, we're going to hear a decision later today. Uh, Agree or disagree, Bax? I think the decision's already made. Uh, This is a procedure by law they have to do. The informal briefing is so that they could all get their decision made up and ironed out and everything before they had to release the decision to the public. That might actually be the only good piece of PR Ohio State has had this whole time. Um, I fully expect we're going to go within hours what their decision is, and you know, I, I think at this point we're going to get a written report and everything and their findings as well. Yeah, I have no doubt that, that the decision has been made. I just wonder if, we, if it's actually going to be made public today, but I do think it will be. Um, so let's cut to the chase. What will that decision be, Mr. Baxendale? Uh, Urban Meyer will be back as the head coach of Ohio State. They may not apologize to him the way that I would hope they would, but he's going to be back as the head coach at Ohio State. And here's the thing, I've known about this since Monday. So the fact that we're hearing all these stories uh, leaking out about uh, Urban is going to get quote-unquote suspension for time served, which, let's face it, this has been a suspension with pay for him, um, I expect that to be what it is to say that Urban is – they're going to say something to the effect that is that Urban has already been withheld from coaching for three full weeks from the football team, and we consider this time served as punishment in this critical point in the year in preparation for his team. So I think Urban Meyer will be coaching the Buckeyes for the Oregon State game, and Urban Meyer will be a president tomorrow. What are the chances that they suspend him? Um, I know you don't think they will, but, I mean – <laughs> Nothing can be 100% at this point. Um, what are the chances you think they suspend him? For an actual game? Correct. Uh, 10% at most. Mostly because it seems like this report is essentially what we already know. There's no giant surprises in there. There's no, you know, some other assistant coach was also involved in domestic violence and Urban covered that up or something, right? Like there's no surprises seeming to come out here from all the leaks that you're hearing from the people who are close to the board, right? So, to me, I feel like Urban Meyer, and we've heard this, Urban doesn't think he should be suspended. Urban thinks he's done everything right. So, if Urban, I think Urban would have a real issue with him getting suspended for an actual game when he's already been sitting out for three weeks during camp, which, let's face it, is more important than him being on the sideline for Oregon State. But, I mean, Rock is going to beat Oregon State by 40. Urban Meyer is going to beat Oregon State by 40. Right, Matt Baxendale on the headset would beat Oregon by 21. I mean, let's be honest here. So, you know, I, I think Urban Meyer at this point getting suspended for a game would shock me. Just shock me. You're selling yourself short. Buckeyes would still cover with you uh, coaching against the Beavers. Uh, I, I could still cover that spread against the Beavers. Uh, no pun intended there. One thing about this story that annoys me, I keep reading that – Michael Drake, the university president at Ohio State, will have final say, quote, he will have the final decision on this, period. That is not accurate. And now Ohio State might say publicly that Michael Drake has the final say. That's not accurate, though. He works for the Board of Trustees, not the other way around. And there are 20 members of the Board of Trustees. So I'll, I'll give this analogy to the people out there. Imagine, now, I can't imagine there's too many people that have 20 supervisors at work, but let's just, you know, for the sake of argument, say you're going into a meeting. You're deciding something that is super important at your company. There is you in that meeting and 20 of your supervisors, and that's it. The 20, there's 21 people in there, you and 20 of your supervisors, people that are responsible for your hiring and your firing, your salary, everything. Do you really think you're walking out of that meeting and you're the one making the final decision? Hell no. So, Bucknut is out there listening to the show. Uh, when you hear that Drake's going to make the final decision today or whenever the final t- decision comes down, do not believe that. This is the Board of Trustees' final decision. And Matt Baxendale, I know you think that is a good thing, and I agree with you. Yeah, it's a fantastic thing because Drake is not exactly an Ohio State lifer. Uh, the Board of Trustees knows full well the impact of this decision, but as somebody who grows up in West Coast academia may not really understand it. Uh, 
the board of trustees is going to make a recommendation and Drake is going to follow it. Right. I, I, it'd be stupid not to. And uh, frankly, they have the ability to hire and fire him. And he's already had a giant thing come up in the waters uh, firing a couple years ago. That was not popular at all. So I think they're not going to give him a ton of leeway to make a decision on this. And frankly, that's a good thing because guess what? The board of trustees are people, a lot of whom are very heavily tied to Ohio state or Ohio state graduates who know the impact of foolishly removing urban Meyer or embarrassing urban Meyer will have an effect on the university as a whole. This isn't just about the football team getting their coach back, who's awesome and beats Michigan. It's also about the university's academic and, and athletic and financial health, right? Schools that do well in sports get more academic enrollees every year. Schools that actively undermine their sports programs, take a look at Missouri, right after they had that whole thing where the football team almost boycotted a game, uh, and their campus went nuts over some, I don't even want to get into it, Missouri's enrollment has been under free fall the last two years. They're closing dorms because not enough kids are wanting to go there because people are so pissed off at the university. So the people on the board of trustees know this isn't just a football decision. This will affect their fundraising. This will affect their endowment. This will affect all those scholarships for all that academia out there, too. This is a gigantic decision. It is one of the biggest make-or-break sort of things when it comes to the reputation and the financial health of the university. And they know full well that firing Urban Meyer would drastically hurt all of them. So this not being in Drake's hand is fantastic because I trust 20 people with ties to Ohio State more than I trust some guy who's been here for three years from California. No doubt about that. Switching gears kind of, this is still kind of Urban Meyer related, but from a football perspective, Buckeyes ranked number five in the AP poll. I mean, you could not find a publication. Uh, Phil Steele, no matter what, who, whoever you would read, um, everybody had Ohio State in the top four. Um, AP poll comes out a couple days ago, uh, has Wisconsin fourth, Buckeyes fifth. I have to think that's 100% because of the uncertainty with Urban Meyer. So, um, and I think Wisconsin has a hell of a team this year. I mean, they, their offensive line is always good. This could be one of the best they've had. And you got to think Jonathan Taylor is going to be even better as a sophomore than he was a true freshman. And I think Hornybrook's pretty bad, but maybe he can get himself to solid as a fourth-year junior. You never know. They, they seem to think so up there. Um, I think he's one of those guys that's decent against bad teams and, and just can't cut it against good teams. But I digress. Uh, what do you make of what's a loaded Buckeye team being ranked fifth in the country? Well, A, none of this crap matters because it's the AP poll and it doesn't make a difference. Somebody was really funny on Twitter. I forget who it was yesterday. And they had like 25 through one, and it was essentially each line said something like, this doesn't matter one bit, but let's all complain a lot, one Bama. I mean, like, who gives a crap at this point, right? <laughs> Alabama's the number one in every preseason poll unless Ohio State wins the national title. Then Alabama will be two the next year, and that's it. Like, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The AP poll has no effect on the playoff. It has no effect on anything. And this is some writers hedging their bets on the off chance Urban Meyer doesn't keep his job or this is too much of an, a negative side effect for the team to go undefeated this season. That's not a knock on Wisconsin, who's obviously a great football team. But let's face it, Ohio State's a better football team than Wisconsin. Ohio State played with one quarterback arm behind their back last year in the Big Ten title game and still beat Wisconsin and brings back a loaded team that most of us think is going to be better, particularly at the quarterback position. So uh, I think this is just people hedging their bets. They, the preseason polls don't matter one bit. You know, we're going to be talking about actual polls that matter right around Halloween when teams have played seven, eight games. That's the first poll I'm actually going to pay any attention to other than, yay, the Big Ten has some teams that are ranked in the preseason, and it looks like it's a loaded league again. Yay. Another football question for you. Um, what concerns you the most when you look at this Ohio State team? Is it the uncertainty on the offensive line, the uncertainty at linebacker, something else? Just what concerns you the most and why? Um, I've been saying linebackers for months. I have no reason to change my mind there. I trust the coaching of the offensive line more than I trust the coaching of the linebacker. And uh, – you know, we're not really getting any info on a lot of this because Ohio State is on lockdown like it's a, you know, maximum security prison right now. I wouldn't um, know anything about but, that, Bax. I wouldn't know anything about that at all. <laughs> nope, not at all. Nope. Don't want to get Dave in trouble with the Ohio State people who are locking the place out. Nope. <laughs> but the truth is, the truth is, who would you trust more to coach your offensive line? Uh, Kevin Wilson, a former offensive lineman. Greg Sudrala, who in the past has done very well coaching O-lines, even if we haven't been thrilled with his job here in Columbus. And by the way, the coach who's stepped in to help is Tim Hinton, who is taking care of the tight end roles, which gives Kevin Wilson even more time to help with the offensive line. 
I trust that way more than I, I, I trust Urban Meyer's best man at linebacker after a, a first year of middling results. So the talent's certainly there at both positions. I just, you know, until the linebackers show me that they can do it, I'm going to be worried they can't do it. And that's, Let me ask you that's that. the bottom line. I'm with you on that. I'm more concerned about the linebackers and the O-line. I'm concerned about both because the O-line's also banged up with Munford. We don't know the severity of it. Munford's banged up. He wasn't at like, practice last time we were out there. Brady Taylor's banged up. So there was uncertainty to begin with. Now you got a couple guys banged up. Um, let me ask you this because you mentioned a good point about Kevin Wilson working with the offensive line. He definitely is working a lot with the offensive line, even more than he did last year. Greg is now working a lot with the linebackers, so that should mitigate whatever weakness there is with Billy Davis. I'm not saying they'll take it away, but it should mitigate. If, if Shiano is, in fact, working a lot with the linebackers, I'm told he is. It looks like he is when we're out there. Of course, we're, out there when they're, we're not out there when they're really playing football, but during, like, light drills, Shiano, you know, he walks around to all the defense, but he seems to be with the linebackers more than he is with the other units. So hopefully that will help with the linebackers. Yeah, and that's a smart thing for them to do because, you know, his, his background originally was with the defensive backfield, but you got a guy like Alex Grinch in there now who also has a similar background that you have to believe can do a pretty good job. And, hey, let's face it, if somebody is the weakest link, then that's the one you want to help with the most, right? So, you know, that's a good sign. I, I'm happy and heartened by the fact that Shiano is keeping an eye on the linebackers. Um, but that isn't his specialty, you know? Uh, but he's a great overall accomplished coach. And when you have a guy who's a former head coach in a program like Rutgers where they sucked except for when he was there, then that's a good thing because those Rutgers defenses had some decent linebackers on those teams. So that helps. That certainly helps. Um, but I think a lot of people are making a lot of one of two warm-up sessions where Thayer Munford wasn't repping at left tackle. It could have just been a maintenance day or maybe he sprained his ankle slightly and they're like, yeah, we, we know what we have. We don't want to get him hurt, you know. So there's just – we don't know enough that this offensive line shuffle could be nothing more than just saying, hey, let's make sure we have depth. Let's make sure these guys that we have that we think can play that maybe aren't in our top five but are a very good number 5A and 5B are part of a rotation in case someone goes down. You know, and that probably happens a lot in camp. And right now we're so starved for information just in general that one look of something different makes everybody go, oh, my gosh. Like, if Ohio State really had wanted to mess with the reporters – but if you got in there and you have, like, the Mario McCall lining up at running back for just the warm-up sets and t- Tate Martell taking the first snaps at quarterback just to mess with the press, they wouldn't know the difference, even though you hear all these other things behind the scene. The only thing that the eyes have seen from the public have been two warm-up sessions. So OSU could literally have shown whatever they wanted at that point, and we wouldn't be able to argue against it otherwise because we just have not seen anything resembling the access you usually get in camp. So, you know, I certainly think there's concern about both. Again, this is Ohio State, you know, hashtag Buckeye problems where we're talking about, man, I hope these five stars all come together this year uh, at the linebacker position. Like, if that's our biggest problem, we're in great shape. But, you know, that is the biggest problem on the team. And I'm going to stick with the linebackers, even with the discussion of Shiano involved in the role. Fantastic insights, as always, from the people's champ, Matt Baxendell. His column every Sunday is a must-read. It is, of course, The Bucket. Thank you very much, Bax, and thanks to our listeners out there for tuning into the show. Hope you have a great day, and I know you will if uh, the Buckeyes get good news later today. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best in band in the land. Bye.